Dragon's Lair, the fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. It looks like an animated Hollywood feature, but it's not. It's a new Laserdisc arcade game, one that allows the player to make the hero's next move. It's about a little knight who has to go into a castle. He has to go through 38 rooms that are booby-trapped, and in just a fraction of a second, you have to keep him from dying or getting into trouble. The player must make some 400 decisions during a six-minute game. The right decision, the hero escapes. The wrong one, and it's back to the drawing board. But the creators of Dragon's Lair are working on yet another arcade game. The second one is Space Ace, and it is a game that's a little more complicated. It's a game in which we're going to be able to take several paths as we go through any adventure. This is an animation challenge, so our background men are painting backgrounds very much the way they would do if we were making a classical animation feature. Uh, they're creating the environment over which we will place the little characters, and these characters are the, uh, the identifying factor that the game player will have to look at and help get in or out of trouble. So stand by. While Dirk the Daring is fighting for his life in arcades across the country, new, more challenging games may make our hero obsolete before his time. The fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. What you're seeing is not the latest animated film coming soon to a theater near you. This is another animator's idea of what the cartoon of the future will look like and be used for. It's known as participatory video entertainment. And if you've ever played video games at arcades, you know what that means. But it's a remarkably beautiful video game called Dragon's Lair, and it's the creation of Don Bluth. It's the first arcade game to successfully combine a classical style of animation with computer technology. Lead on, adventurer. Your quest awaits. Both Disney's Tron, which is computer-generated, and Don Bluth's Dragon Lair, which still incorporates the animator's own hand in the actual drawings, are examples of state-of-the-art in cartoon. And today we're going to talk about what's current in the cartoon field, as well as what the future has in store. The animation director of Dragon's Lair, Don Bluth, is uh, with me in the studio, and I'm thrilled to meet him because I just love cartoons, all the pieces. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here, Anne. It's nice to have you here. And if you thought that there was a little touch of Disney in, uh, in some of the drawings in Dragon's Lair, or if you ever saw Secret of Nim and thought that that was a beautifully drawn uh, piece, you did work for Disney for 10 years, right? Yes, I did. I worked one year when Walt was still there. Uh -huh. And that was way back there in 1956. I was just out of high school. You were a sprout. <laughs> a sprout, a real one. And then I left for so many years and traveled about and then grew up a little bit and finally went back in 1971. And a total of 10 years I was there at the Disney studio. Well, show me what an animator does. Well, basically an animator is an actor. We have to remember that. He's a guy who loves to act, but he's too scared to do it on a stage. <laughs> and he knows how to draw, so what the guy will do is he'll try and draw it. Ah. On, on motion picture film, I brought some drawings here that maybe will help illustrate okay. that. Motion picture film, we have a lot of little tiny frames of film that go by mm -hmm. your eye at the rate of 24 seconds. Right here is a guy who steps over an obstacle, and each one of these drawings has to be drawn, which shows him stepping over there. Ah. And then he gets hit by a laser gun and turns into a little kid and screams. So what you're looking at really is a lot of work. Now this little oh, scene yeah. here will last something like one second on the screen, and it took us maybe four days to draw it. So that's a lot of time, and it winds up costing you something like about $4,000 for just that little bit that I showed you. So which, is, which is why they're doing a lot of computer work in the Saturday morning version of cartoons. Now, th those are not done this way, are they? No. And eventually we have to get that to color. We have to color each uh -huh. one of these separately and shoot them each separately on a camera. And the computer-generated animation, a lot of that is done with a lot of little numbers and mathematics, which mm -hmm. I am terrible at, so I haven't gotten very <laughs> involved in So you still do it by hand. I still do it by hand on cell. Now, you do use a computer, though, in Dragon's Lair, but yes, not, not to do the drawings. There's a special thing that we've just come up against that's the most wonderful thing. It's called a laser disc. And in Dragon's Lair, we put all of the animation onto a piece of film, mm -hmm. then later we transferred it over to a laser disc. The laser disc has a capability called random access in which it can there's a There's disc, the right, disc now, right now, by the there. way. Looks like a shiny record. Isn't it? It's, it's sort of iridescent and silver, but it's basically like a phonograph record, and this laser light can pinpoint any point on that disc in an instant. Mm. That allows us to design scenes, uh, go to a scene that shows a threat, and then immediately go to a scene that shows the threat going away and getting saved. 
Ah. So if the player then, looking at the pictures that are on that laser disc, pushes the right button and moves the right joystick, he will cause the animation to be seen that's appropriate to his moves. And if he pushes the wrong button, you well, drop him through the... Pit. Right, and he loses his money, and you know, and the <laughs> industry goes on. <laughs> well, now, Tron was done with a computer actually doing the drawings, That's right? right. Somebody designed what they wanted it to look like, and the computer ran well, it's with a, it? Well, it's a combination. See, I think that a computer is a tool. And no matter how you cut this thing, it's the human who is the artist, is the important it's part. Nice to know. Because you'll never replace the human part. Uh -huh. As long as he can take that, that computer and make it make beautiful pictures, or we can take pencil and paint and make it beautiful pictures, it's really basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's how to use your tools. And computer generated is a beautiful look that has its own look. Mm -hmm. uh, cell animation is my preference, and I simply like that, so I go at it that way. Oddly enough, we both cost the same amount. We cost about $100,000 a minute. Oh, my so word. When you're looking at it, don't blink. <laughs> no, enjoy every precious frame. Yeah. What, what does the future hold? Is it going to be room for, for uh, cell by cell in the future? The future. Yeah. The future is always up for grabs. But I would say that uh, the future of animation is very bright and never been better because we have an enormous market right now for video arcade games. Uh, and like it will yours. be done yeah, in a classical animation style. Mm -hmm. It seems that Japan has just dumped $150 million into making laser disc players because of Dragon's Lair. That right? And that means that probably the whole laser disc industry now will open up and you'll be able to have laser discs in your home. That means instruction, education, oh, it means the whole thing's going to happen. So and all because of could, you, Don Blue. Been better. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Oh, it's and a my delight pleasure. to meet you. And I hope you don't just do the video games because Secret of Nim was wonderful. I'll work it on another, another one. one like that. Good, good. Glad to hear it. Paul. Bluth's next project is already in the planning stage. It's to be called Space Ace. Now, Space Ace, we figured. Uh, a lot of kids do like to play the space games in the arcade, so why not produce a game that has the same kind of things they used to see in Star Wars, you know, or any of the big space pictures. Put all the sound we can with it, give them all of the, that uh, opulent visual look, give them a story, and uh, the Space Ace, I think, is an even more exciting game because now the laser disc doesn't just jump to the next scene. The laser disc can now explore different avenues. We have two fantasy worlds in Space Ace. You can go off in this direction or that direction. And if you play the game in one direction, you still have a chance to go back and play it again in another direction and see more stuff. So it's like exploring. Um, here's a few right here of the cells that define some of the characters. And maybe you can see that Space Ace is a guy. We're trying to connect with that guy in the arcade that's playing the games. And he's like a very heroic man. But he's shot by a special weapon. And this weapon turns him back into a child. So he loses his girlfriend. The alien kidnaps the girl and takes her away, and what he's got to do is get out there and destroy the weapon and get his girl back and bring her back home. He's this will space ace. That is the ace, yeah. Right here is what he turns into when he becomes a little kid. His name is Dexter. That's like Jerry Lewis. That's about the size <laughs> of it. Yeah, right here is the girlfriend. Hey, that's worth chasing. Okay, goes after her. That's Kimmy. Goes out to see if he can get her back. And Don Bluth says that games like Dragon's Lair and Space Ace could pay the way for major full-length animated films again, even though if it is a quarter at a time. There's a real pigeon in there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> Open it. Inside this box is a carrier pigeon. The person who sent it wants a job interview with Rick Dyer. I have never seen anything like this in my life. People want to work for Dyer and his wife, Jan, because their company has the video game industry following their lead. Dragon's Lair, a fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. Dyer invented and produced the laser video game Dragon's Lair. He just introduced the follow-up, Space Ace, that promises to duplicate the financial bonanza of Dragon's Lair, which had $30 million in sales in 40 days. The industry now finds itself wondering what will come next. In June, they'll find out. This is a story about greed, about unbridled ambition and power lust, and the disaster resulting from those faults. It's a computerized home laser video game so secret we can't reveal its name but Dyer allowed us inside his Carlsbad headquarters for enough of a look that indicates the video game industry hasn't seen anything yet. For starters, the computer for the game is compared to the one in the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. It's like a living entity more than it is a machine. It also has uh, what we call artificial intelligence, which is the machine's ability to learn. It knows what your strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, as he talks to you about the events, you see them flowing through 
through the crystal. Not much is remembered of those times, but the empty castles, the fallen temples, the lost grandeur of their cities haunt our legends. To give you an idea of how labor-intensive animation is, is that as many as 24 of these cells are put on and shot individually every second. Mm -hmm. What we're creating is going to allow you to be anything that you ever wanted to be and, and experience it. You're going you're gonna to be there. You will live and die by your decisions. <laughs> Dyer is as unassuming as he is brilliant. Several times he caught himself telling us too much, a bit like a father bubbling over about a newborn child. I'm being awfully trusting. I, I guess I haven't had enough media exposure. I haven't been burned yet. As far as Hollywood's concerned, Hollywood doesn't know we exist. You know, that's the way we'd like to keep it. The atmosphere reflects Dyer's quiet confidence. People here seem unaffected despite being involved with the project that will likely set the industry on its collective video ear. His employees have varied backgrounds. Before coming here, Don Bennett worked on interior design for Boeing aircraft. Uh, much different than this, but not near as much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Dyer's background is engineering, not art, but around the artists, he still knows what he wants. It would be nice if you could make that, d that um, shadow yeah. stronger. Yeah. The writing, art, engineering, and mechanical departments are all under one roof. Half the building is empty, for now. In June, this warehouse will come to life. The new home video system that Rick and Jan Dyer have banked everything on will be shipped from here. And if test marketing is any indication, what they will have is your basic phenomenal success. Dyer's research indicates once people play the new game, they'll be hooked. The average sitting time is three hours. These are rough sketches set to motion. We're estimating that you'll be able to play the game 20 hours a week for six months before you will have explored the, the entire world. Unlike standard video games that demand quick reflexes, the new project places a premium on thinking. You talk to the computer and it will talk back. Uh, the computer will say, uh, John, did you, did you just go to get a snack? And you would say, yes, you'd be kind of surprised. And it would say, well, I would appreciate in the future if you would excuse yourself before walking off on me. And that's a feature that's actually in the system. The cost of the game is still secret, but we're told a standard color TV is all that's needed once you buy the game. We're pioneers. We're doing something that's never been done. We have artists, we have writers, we have engineers. We have technicians, they're all working together and that has never existed before. There's never really been a reason for those three groups to all coexist simultaneously. They, they, what we're really doing is combining art with science. My wife and I, as you probably can guess, are gambling everything we own on this, so it's, it's kind of scary, but it, that's the sort of thing well, that makes you want to succeed. Dyer recalls another person starting that way, a man who had everything under one roof and did pretty well. His name was Walt Disney.